yet again is another angel, but this one has like a crooked wing. All right, guys, today I'm bringing you to Mount Everest for a really special jigsaw puzzle. This depicts the, the front page of a newspaper from 1953. And uh, just to make it a little bit more interesting and also useful to you guys, I'm going to make sure to include some tips and tricks on how to approach solid colors like this one here. So without any further delays, welcome to Everest Conquered. You know, guys, one of the great things about running a puzzle channel like mine is that eventually we allow ourselves to try completely different puzzles that we would probably not normally uh, even look at if the cameras weren't running. So this is a perfect example of that. This is the London Herald uh, front page from the 2nd of June 1953. And it's all about the, the, the breaking news of the conquering of the Everest and also the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. And by the way, guys, this is a Holdsen's jigsaw puzzle of 500 pieces, also made with cardboard. So far, I'm really happy with the quality. As, as you can see here, it's got really irregular shaped tabs and, and the pieces themselves are quite unique. So I'm really impressed so far. But now the big question is, how on earth are we going to separate the, 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 you know, the sorting of this puzzle? So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything that seems to be a title, everything that's dark or solid, and then everything else. And because this is such a small puzzle, only 500 pieces, I ended up with five trays and one of them is actually half empty, as you're going to see in a minute. But let's check out how this has been separated. I got one full tray of just small writings, then the other tray with solid blacks or kind of semi-solid colors, then um, some leftovers of the small writing, and then some very solid white pieces with a couple of lines on them. And then, of course, all the titles and everything that appeared to be a, sort of a bolder or much bigger writings. Right. As you can see here, I started with the title London Herald, the name of the newspaper. So far, so good. It was pretty straightforward, you know, like, you know, there's no tricks or anything to doing something like this by the looks of it, which is, by the way, my first newspaper-ish sort of um, jigsaw puzzle. So I'm, I'm really enjoying this so far. And as you can see here, I'm not starting. I haven't started with the edges. I started with a bigger writing and I'm just going to build around it. And by the way, guys, this whole experience um, so far has been really enjoyable. I thought the, the bigger titles like this one here that I'm working on were going to be a lot more straightforward and easier then it actually turned out to be some of those uh, writings like the C you've just seen here. It took me like a half an hour to actually find the right piece for it because a lot of the pieces would have like just a very small corner of uh, the leathers. So it's not like, you know, some of them have half the leather on it, but many of them have only bits and pieces. So it was really tricky. <laughs> And I, I don't know if you guys remember the clandestine cliches puzzle in which all the pieces had exactly the same shape, like all the tabs had exactly the same angle and everything. This one is quite the opposite, which makes the puzzle a lot more, I would say, more straightforward when finding the pieces, because you can actually recognize some of the, um, you know, the little wings and the tabs and the spacing and all. But this puzzle here was a bit tricky because it wasn't interlocking properly. And now you're going to see what I actually did, which was a little bit frustrating. But as you can see here, you see some of those pieces are poking up, which is kind of weird. It's not interlocking, but I'll just let you watch now. 
<laughs> Look at what I've done. Oh god, I was just trying to fix, the, you know, the, the interlocking and I squished it too, too, um, too much. And I'll have to spend another probably half an hour trying to put it back together. So here's a hint for you. Please do not, do not squeeze your puzzles too much. If they do not interlock, they don't interlock. Don't push your luck like I've done here. we have arrived finally to the more solid colors so i'm just gonna sort of go run past whatever i was doing here at this time with the more solid colors now lucky enough i in this part the top of the square picture which is mostly black it had a very clear white line on it so finding the you know the exact location of those pieces was pretty straightforward all I needed to focus on was finding pieces that had that white tab on one side and everything else was solid color. The rest obviously is history. If you're new to puzzles, just remember that you don't actually need to worry too much about solid colors or, you know, like completing skies or anything that's just appears to be very challenging. Remember, you can focus on very specific details on the pieces that will give you hints of where the pieces are going to go. Like, like this example here, you know, it's very clear to me that the pieces that have one side, one of the tabs is completely white and everything else is black. I knew that they would go in this part of the puzzle. But anyway, guys, what, what I'm going to show you now is in details how I actually approach, com approach completely solid colors like this one's here. Like, how do I how do I go about in finding the right pieces since you don't have any, you know, any other information besides the shape? So what I'm going to show you now is something that hopefully you will remember after this video and you think of me like oh i remember rick told me this because <laughs> some of the stuff is actually quite funny so uh, I'm, I'm gonna explain to you how i name the pieces and how i actually recognize them what do i focus on when i'm looking for a specific solid color oh not just solid but any pretty much any color any pieces like here, for example, instead of panicking about, okay, I've got to the part where all the pieces are solid, what do I do? Do I look for hints or do I focus on the color or, or what? Like in this example, all I see is the head of the ET from the movies. That's all I see. So what I'm looking now is literally a dark or solid, possibly solid color piece that has that ET shaped corner. That is all I'm looking for. So I found one candidate right now and it's obviously not going to work, but I'll keep trying. But by doing something like this, like referencing to things that I recognize or that, but again, by associating the shape of the pieces to things that I'm, that I'm used to, it makes it so much easier to sort of filter out what I'm actually looking for instead of just looking at the tray with tons of solid colors and just not knowing what to look for. Okay, so in this example, all I'm thinking about is a dark piece that looks like an angel, like a snow angel with his arms wide open. And one side is pretty straight with that sharp wing on one side. So that is all I'm thinking about. I don't care about anything else. All I'm going to focus on in my trays is to find that snow angel with a very straight, like no angles or anything on one side. But now if you look at this piece here on the right side, like there's nothing special about it. There's no referencing or anything. It just looks like a really plain you know, piece that doesn't actually resembles anything really. So what I'm going to do is instead of worrying too much about it, 
I'll just go around it. I'll just try something completely different, like this piece here, for example, which is another one of those angels with the wide, wide wings wide open. And it seems like this one has a very long wing on the right side. So if you look at the right side, it's going to be sideways. And I can see already that this is uh, one of those snow angels with a very long arm on the left side of it. So I'm just going to look for that piece now. And again, the same happens with this one here. See, this is another one of those snow angels. And this one has a really fat um, wing on the right side. So spotting that wing was super easy amongst all of the dark pieces on the tray. And now this one, it seems like yet again is another angel, but this one has like a crooked wing on the right side. So again, I'm not going to think about anything else but that crooked wing when I look for the piece on my tray. And here's a candidate. Let's see if it fits. Nope. But I'll get there eventually. Like, isolating that crooked um, wing is going to be super easy like this one here, you see. I think I found it. Let's see. Bingo! Haha! <laughs> Okay, guys, let's just move on. I'm going to accelerate things a little bit. I think you get what I mean right now, eh? And here's another perfect example of how I actually approach solid colors. As you can see here, there is uh, that weird shape which I sometimes call a heart sometimes I call it a diamond it's one of those like literally like a, a diamond shape um, piece so what I do now is I go back to the tray and I focus on finding that big shape nothing else matters I even ignore any any other detail that's that might be in this um, piece like for example here this this piece looks like you might have half dark color and half sort of a, a light gray on the bottom. So it's, it looks like starting to uh, clear up. So here it is. I just found the piece basically just looking for that specific detail. Now this one here, have a look. I've got another one of those ET shaped heads, right? So all I'm going to do now is, yes, you know, just look for that ET shaped part in the chair. And you see, before I forget one very special thing about the, um, you know, the conquering of the Everest, is that it was done so by a New Zealander, Sir uh, Edmund Hillary, and his mountaineer and, you know, workmate, partner, in crime for this was the Tibetan Tenzing Norgay. Now the both of them were literally the first people on earth to step on the summit of Mount Everest, literally the highest mountain in the world. Isn't that exciting? But anyway, back to the puzzle now. I've got to be honest, guys, in this part where there were 
or there was only very small text. I was kind of getting a little bit worried. But again, if you remember to use techniques like the ones I've mentioned before, if you focus on the shape and then relate that shape to something you know, like by association, like in this case, I'm dealing with an angel with a really fat, um, like a really nice and, and big um, wing. So that's what I'm looking for right now. Just that big wing on the side, nothing else, like not the text and nothing really matters. Right, my friends, we are finally arriving to the completion of this puzzle, and that's our last piece. Which was chosen, by the way, very randomly. <laughs> there you go, there you go, there you go. Yay! And that is another, what? A snow angel with one of the wings pointing up. And that's our Everest Conquered. Isn't it nice? Now, it took me about seven and a half hours to complete this puzzle it's quite small 500 pieces it wasn't as difficult as i thought it would be but again i was focusing more on shapes rather than the text themselves and um, i'm just gonna let you look through now very slowly i'm not gonna read okay guys i'm not gonna read this whole thing for you because it will probably be very boring for you to uh, to be sitting there listening to me reading the whole thing but there you go Hope you enjoyed this video and um, please let me know in the comments if you enjoyed any of the, the tips that I gave you gave, gave to you today. And, um, you know, some of them are pretty obvious stuff, like really common sense. But, you know, for someone out there who might be starting with puzzles, this may be actually be very helpful. So thank you very much for watching, everyone. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you enjoy my videos, make sure you check the playlist that's on the screen now. And if you want to see my collection of jigsaw puzzles, check this playlist here on the bottom side of the screen. All right, and I'll see you next time. Bye.